This is Spaceship Earth, a famous structure at the center of Epcot at Walt Disney World, Florida. Here are a few toothpicks and some peas. An old factory, now abandoned. Oh yeah, and some mysterious wooden blocks. These are some of the ingredients of an untold story about education in America. In today's world of artificial intelligence, automation, and ever-evolving technology, people have begun to ask the question, will America's education system prepare us for the jobs of tomorrow? Perhaps some answers can be found by exploring an unlikely connection between a 200-year-old set of blocks and arguably the gold standard of learning for future innovation, MIT. I use them for historical reasons because they're connected with Frank Lloyd Wright and with the modern movement in general. And I use them for practical reasons because they're small and they're easy to handle and they feel good. So I use them for sensory reasons as well. And MIT isn't alone. Their work with the Froebel sets is tactile, it's visceral, it's through the skin. It unlocks doors that have been previously closed, and it's one wonderful way for them to transverse hemispheres, to go from the right to the left in a powerful and compelling and liberating way for young people. Their neighbors in the graduate studio looking at them saying, you know, what are you guys doing? You know, why are you playing with blocks? You're, you're big kids, you know, why, why are you playing with blocks? And the students' answers are always so lovely, and I'll use the word lovely, because they talk about, well, we're looking at the world in a new way. So if some of the brightest minds in higher education today are using these kindergarten blocks, what makes them so special? And where did these toys come from? To answer this, we need to go all the way back to just after the American Civil War. The United States was developing into a very individualistic society. Already uh, in the 1860s, a booming capitalist society. So all these people interested in doing something for themselves, but what is going to bring us all together? This is where the story starts to get interesting, as a new philosophy of education was beginning to explode in America. The Froebel blocks were part of a system of educational toys designed by this fellow Friedrich Froebel, who was a German educator in the early 19th century, who created kindergarten single-handedly. Froebel's kindergarten was much bigger than just something you'd attend before first grade. It was an entirely new approach to learning. Kindergarten was really for three to seven-year-olds. Very sophisticated concept, especially for something from 200 years ago. I think one can say right now, if you look at what we know about how humans learn, Froebel was way ahead of his time. Froebel saw play as absolutely necessary. In fact, he viewed it as God's gift to children to develop morally and develop socially. You learn so much when you play. Can I try it? Okay, what's yeah. Alicia doing for her right now? Where are He tapped into that universal sense of wonder within children and then built on that. And I think that that's the foundation of a good education. It's about the way in which we draw upon children to be responsible for their own learning. Almost can't handle this. When you meld a child's curiosity with thoughtfully planned experiences, you can create life-changing experiences for children. There's no other better way to learn. It was a system that fostered innovation, creativity, and curiosity. We asked our guest today, Buckminster Fuller, to send in biographical information. Here's what we got, folks, a first. This is 67 pages. You have been called the greatest living genius you have been called the Leonardo da Vinci of our time, the Benjamin Franklin of the space age. How would you describe yourself? A very, a very average human being. Buckminster Fuller, at only five years old, in a Froebel kindergarten, invented the geodesic dome using only a handful of peas and sticks. This would later become the inspiration for the design of Epcot's Spaceship Earth. It 
It was truly a golden era, with innovators such as Frank Lloyd Wright, Charles Eames, all equipped with a Freudal education. This system helped spur one of the most important women's movements in modern history. If you want to look at a women's movement that got something done, it's the kindergarten. This was a new occupation for women. As well as sparked the modern art movement. These three and four and five-year-olds are getting the tools to make modern art at a time when art was becoming modern. The Froebel kindergarten was responsible for the explosion of modernism in the arts. Vasily Kandinsky's Bauhaus paintings, it looks like the kind of things done at the Bauhaus. It looks like the work of Piet Mondrian. It looks like Cubism. People would say, well, this really looks like everything. Is it possible it affected everything? And it looks to me like it actually did. The story of this innovative system goes well beyond the classroom. But America was changing again. With the Industrial Revolution now in full swing, there was a new demand for a strong working class that could read, memorize, and follow instructions. America needed to support its booming industry that was fueled by its factories. At this point, Froebel's innovative kindergarten methods were abandoned to better fit the needs and demands of the time. But what suffered was innovation, creativity, and curiosity. This is where education remains today, in a 19th century industrial model that is failing to meet the demands of our time by preparing children for jobs that are disappearing. We had for a solid 60, 70 years the greatest early childhood education in the world. And then we consciously decided to stop, hoping for the best, hoping that what we were doing was going to pay off. And it hasn't. In fact, what it's done is it's locked us into a system where we have teachers delivering a curriculum that's determined on a national level and then forced upon teachers that then have to deliver it and in order to measure whether or not they've delivered it properly, you have to test the child. Are we prepared as a generation and as a global citizenry to really sit down, look at the current system and say, it was built for a fundamentally different era. We have fundamentally different problems, we have fundamentally different opportunities. If we raise yet another generation of children, within the standardized system, we will only perpetuate and make worse the current situation that we have. Many of the answers that we're looking for may well lie in history, and we just need to pick them up. The irony is that the leading minds of today are embracing Froebel's methods that were once the education standard in America. If we are to have a truly 21st century model of education, there's a lot that we can learn from Friedrich Froebel. So even though kindergarten was invented nearly 200 years ago, to me it feels like it's the perfect approach for today's society. Because we need young people to grow up to become creative thinkers. If some of America's most pioneering minds of the 19th century and today's students from some of our top universities are using Froebel, it begs the question, what's in the way of bringing Froebel's methods back? Or the bigger question, will America's current factory model of education be able to prepare us for the jobs of tomorrow? Perhaps the most innovative thing we can do for our future isn't to create something new, but explore something we lost.